actually 16 members are there ma'am it's taking time we shall start ma'am okay sir so hello and a very good evening one and all uh, on behalf of the organizing committee and the management of satyabama institute of science and technology i would like to extend a warm welcome to every one of you all you distinguished guests yes you the faculty members from various parts of the country and um, you know we are uh, Uh, you, your presence here makes this event really special and we are very very gra grateful to have each and every one of you here as we are all aware today is day 4 of the one week international faculty development program on mathematics in real applied and computational domains and today we have a dynamic speaker dr r shivraj so it's an honor sir to introduce uh, Uh, Dr. Shivraj, to all of you, Dr. R. Shivraj has more than ten years of teaching and research experience, and presently he is working as an associate professor in the Department of Mathematics, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar National Institute of Technology, Jalandhar, Punjab, India. He worked as a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Mathematics, United Arab Emirates University, United Arab Emirates. He worked at Guangdong University of Technology, Guangzhou, China, under a faculty exchange program. He has received the Royal Society Commonwealth Science Conference Fellow on grant from Royal Society of London. He has received a travel grant from CSIR India to participate in a conference at Turkey. He is the Joint Secretary for the Academia for Advanced Research in Mathematics Society. and he has published 57 manuscripts which includes several q1 q2 journals sci sie and scopus journals he has guided four phd scholars dr shivraj has received the vit research award for nine consecutive years he has visited several universities and institutes around the world to deliver invited talks which includes national university of singapore national defense university of malaysia University Putra Malaysia Institute of High Performance Computing Singapore the University of the West Indies Trinidad and Tobago University of Botswana Canadian University Dubai to name a few he has served as a guest editor for several journals and book series including the European Physical Journal special topics trends in mathematics lecture notes in mechanical engineering AIP conference proceedings an international journal of engineering and technology uae he has published a book in chapman and hall crc new york he has organized several international conferences and workshops to promote research in india and uae sir it's a great delight uh, you know to have you with us today and um, uh, i i now invite you to deliver the talk so the stage is all yours sir thank you thank you thank you so i would like to thank uh, the management uh, and the uh, uh, okay. uh, i would like to thank the I management like the rnc committee uh, for giving me an opportunity to share some of my views uh, through this uh, program uh, many programs in nowadays we can see that uh, uh, that is being organized to promote research and uh, uh, the inter inter exchange of idea activities so in that way when we share some of our views in particular topic it will give the opportunity for the listener as well as for the presenter to enhance the understanding in that particular topic more better nowadays most of the situations handled in the physical setup that are being experimentized before we it is going to be used for the real life situations the experimental setups uh, takes lot of time manpower and efforts yes less it will make a lot of waste to the environment in such way the in such a way always going for the experimental setup to examine or improve the practical situations is very difficult so in this uh, situations most of the times the researchers are going with the 
theoretical setup. So in the theoretical analysis, it is very interesting that most of the real time situations can be very effectively tackled and the characters of the or the quantitative way, the nature of the practical situation and the nature of the theoretical results, both almost matching very close. By chance, if the matching is not all that close, then we can refine the mathematical modeling, whatever we have used and the technique, whatever we have used, and we can enhance the computational capacity so that we can make sure the practical and the theoretical by character as well as in all sense, it is matching so accurate. For example, in the ancient days, we used to get the rain report, but most of the times, if they say rain, it may not rain because those times the computational facilities are less and uh, there were like a uh, lot of computational errors. Till date, it will be very difficult to predict the open data in closed form, all the solutions, it will be very effectively found, but in open form, in a small change, make a big difference. So that's why there may be a various difference in the reports, but nowadays we can see even with percentage, they are saying like, say, for example, by 4.30, there will be a light rain, there will be a rain with thunder, there will be a heavy rain, 30 percentage chance, 100 percentage chance. So now the things are being further updated with the computational facilities. So the stochastic facilities, computational facilities, whatever we have in recent days, with this, it is very much possible for anyone to understand, analyze, examine, and give results that are very well suited with the practical situations. So in this presentation, we are going to see the study of nanofluids, mainly convective flows of nanofluids and their applications in two forms. Number one, we are going to discuss through theoretical way. Number two, we are also going to discuss through the uh, practical way. And we are going to see the relations and the changes between theoretical and the experimental setup. Heat transfer is one of the important disciplines that is from the thermal engineering that concerns about the generation, use, and conservation of thermal energy between physical systems. The heat transfer majorly happen in three forms. Number one, we say conduction that will happen in solids. When a hot molecule transfers to the nearest adjacent cold molecule without any displacement, then that is conduction. The convection takes place in liquids. The molecules at the bottom, they get heat. Due to that, the density will be less. So due to the gravitational force, the molecules with less density will move upward and the molecules with more density will move downward. Through this movement, when the heat is transferred, that is known as convective heat transfer. Majorly, the convective heat transfer is classified into two parts. One is pre-convection, another one is post-convection. Pre-convection will happen only with respect to the density difference and the gravitational acceleration. The forced convection will take place in addition to the density differences. If there is some fan or electromagnetic waves or any external force that is present, the convection happens in addition to the density difference and along with the external force. Then the third one is radiation. There may not be any direct contact between the heat source and the body, but the heat will be transferred through waves. That is known as radiation, like the from sun, how we are getting the heat transferred to earth. The ability of any material to transfer the heat is one of the very important future to transfer the heat. So this heat transfer can be modeled using various equations depends on the need. By chance, if you assume the heat flux is independent of time and it is 
having the variation only in one dimension then the heat flux and by the absence of all other effects then the heat flux is directly proportional to indirectly proportional to the rate of change of temperature of the body with respect to the spatial variable for the inverse proportionality if we add the constant so that is k we consider it physically as thermal conductivity then the heat flux can be represented only with respect to the spatial variation in one dimension in this form suppose we assume that the heat transfers variation also vary with respect to time and by assuming say the variation of the thermal conductivity depends on the spatial variation then the fourier heat transfer equation with the assumption of all other external effects absent only with this diffusion and the unsteady term then the equation will be of this form if we assume the thermal conductivity is not a function of temperature it is a constant then the temporal change and the spatial change for one dimension will be represented in this form if we assume the heat transfer within a pipe the diameter is very thin then compared to the changes in x direction the changes in y or the z direction can be neglected because the points at which we measure the temperature will not have the notable variations that will be negligible variation for example at this second and at this second there may be a change in the environment in in in, in the in form of temperature but for each second we cannot find a significant difference in the temperature say for example uh, morning like 9 o'clock 10 o'clock 11 12 like that we may have temperature variation so 9 let us say 35 maybe by 10 36 maybe by 12 40 so that will be a notable temperature difference but it doesn't matter 9 to 10 it will be immediately changing that is a slow and gradual change that happens for each and every second but that cannot be accounted effectively because it is an insignificant change same way in many situations there may be like in physically we need to consider the impact of time and we need to consider the impact of all the three dimension but it may not be physically possible that all the three dimensions and time may have impact on the particular experiment suppose instead of the thin rod if we assume something like a plate in that considerable x variation will be there considerable y variation also will be there in that case it will be possible to identify the variation in x as well as variation in y then we should go with two dimensions in that case in this in addition to that do square t by do y square will get involved y will be the y dimensional variable suppose if we assume there is a cube or cuboid then all the three dimensions should be considered in that case in addition to x and y the second order partial rate of change of t with respect to z also will be included here so it all depends on the need whether we should go with one dimension or two dimension or three dimensions most of the physical situations where the fluid flow is considered within the closed form two dimensional is sufficient and now if we see the geometrical point of view if we study the things only with respect to the change in distance then we can go with the cartesian coordinate system by chance if you want to study something like a circular cylinder then we can go with the cylindrical coordinate system suppose we want to analyze something like a sphere then we need to go with the spherical coordinate system so it all depends on the need accordingly we need to form the we need to choose the number of dimensions choose the geometrical system and choose the governing equations and this is the atomic view of the heat transfer of something like electronic or atomic vibrations in the hotter region to carry energy to cooler region the 
different materials we have different thermal conductivity property for example the thermal conductivity of metals will be very high than ceramics than polymers the polymers will have the least thermal conductivity most of the physical situations we can't use even all the in all the physical situations we can't use the materials which have high thermal conductivity say for example solids to cool either something engine or some working mechanisms the coolant should be a fluid but we can see from the previous table that all the liquids they have lower thermal conductivity compared to the solids the idea here is if we mix some percentage of solid quantities into something like nano sized particle when we suspend such particle into the base fluids say something like water ethylene glycol so that the property of the working fluid will be improved to respond better for example till date water is one of the better coolant but in the ancient days in the car radiator to cool the engine they pour the water directly but each 50 kilometers or less than 50 kilometers they again need to pour the water but nowadays we can see that there are coolants depends on the capacity of the car and specifications maybe at a stretch more than 100 or 200 or 500 kilometers we can drive the car the cooling system is taking care of the engine performance in such a way that for a long duration when the engine runs the coolant works more effectively it can cool the engine and keep it in a particular temperature so that the system can run so in, like this in many situations the working fluids characters should be improved to have better working to have better working environment so the the base fluids may have less thermal conductivity when we suspend some nano sized particles into the base fluid that will improve the effective thermal conductivity effective viscosity and various other thermophysical properties so that the base fluids can work more better to the practical situations in this motto there were many research happened and then they invented the nano fluids the nano fluids are prepared by using various forms various shapes various base fluids various nano sized particles the nano sized particles in general it can be carbon based or ceramic based or metal based or semiconductor nano particles even liquid based nano particles are being prepared then the shapes there are brick there are spherical there are various shapes the nano particles is being synthesized and the size in general less than 10 to the power minus 9 and those particles will be suspended into the base fluids in such a way they never get settled down because if they get settled down then that means that uh, cool, the water the coolant that will not be effective after some period so most of the cases they prepare the nano fluids in such a way the nano sized particles which are suspended into the base fluid that will always be suspended it will not be set, get settled down this uh, nano fluids finds applications in various domains including engine, engine cooling vehicle thermal management domestic refrigerator heat exchanger hybrid powered engines and many other the cavities mathematically can be classified into two one is orthogonal cavities another one is non orthogonal cavities orthogonal cavities means the square and rectangular type cavities non orthogonal cavities there are any forms something like a triangle trapezoidal hexagonal or cef or any forms in the practical situations to store the energy to create boilers to analyze about the solar collectors underground water flow nuclear reactors thermal performance of 
some simulated systems, and for many reasons, various shapes and types of cavities in real situations it is being used. So mathematically, when we analyze, depends on the problem. The particular geometry is to be considered, but mostly they are like cavities. So these studies, numerical studies on cavities with fluid flow inside the cavities, that to particularly nanofluid flow in the cavities, finds variety of applications and that can be used to analyze the various physical situations. In this motto, this presentation covers two variety. First is theoretical aspects. Second one is the experimental aspects of studies in nanofluid flow within cavities. The first study is about numerical simulation of magnetohydrodynamic mixed convection of hybrid nanofluid flow in a horizontal channel with cavity. In this, the impact on heat transfer and hydrodynamic forces are being studied. These are the governing equations. First one is the continuity equation. Second and third are the X and Y momentum equations. Fourth one is the heat transfer equation. And these are the inlet and outlet boundary conditions. So in this X and Y are the spatial coordinates. These are all the dimensional variables. T is the temporal variable, time variable. Rho is the density of the hybrid nanofluid. Mu is the dynamic viscosity of the hybrid nanofluid. T is the pressure. U is the X velocity component and V is the velocity component in the Y direction. Sigma enough is the electrical conductivity of the magnetic, electrical conductivity of the fluid, nanofluid. B naught is the strength of the magnetic field. This the rho, uh, okay. Beta is the volumetric thermal expansion. G is the gravitational acceleration. T is the temperature. T temperature of the fluid. Tc is the coolant temperature, cool temperature. And uh, alpha HNF is the effective thermal conductivity. Now, this term entirely represents the unsteady. This represents the convection. This represents pressure. This is the viscous term. This is the magnetic field. Gamma is the inclination angle of the magnetic field. This is the volumetric. Overall, this represents the biometric, uh, this uh, bio, uh, buoyancy force. And this is the convection due to temperature. This is the diffusion. So each and every term represent some physical quantity. At the inlet, the, we are considering the variable temperature U equal to Ui that uh, is uh, sleepless. So at the boundary, it is zero. And uh, the temperature is considered as cool temperature. And at the outlet, velocity is still considered for UV, both it is considered as zero. Temperature is considered as insulated temperature. This is the geometry of investigation. The characteristics of heat transfer and fluid flow of hybrid nanofluid <clears throat> enclosed in a horizontal channel with cavity, having a circular obstacle that is being studied in this analysis. The Galerkin-based finite element method is used to solve the governing partial differential equations of this study. Mainly, there were ma many results. Mainly, we are going to see if the size of this obstacle is being increased or the position of this obstacle when it is being changed, how that is going to affect the heat transfer rate within the system. That in this results we can see, if we change the position, that is not making very significant effect, but still there is a considerable variation. By changing the position, if we assume here 
at uh, x naught comma y naught. Then if we move this place or this place with like positions for x naught at 1.8, 1.9, or 2.1, up to 2.54 percentage variation we can see on the average heat transfer rate. If we increase the radius of this obstacle from 0.15 to 0.35, we can get we can enhance the heat transfer rate within the system up to 119 percentage. So the heat transfer rate within the system can be effectively controlled by changing the shape or increasing the size, but it may not be possible in all the experiments increasing the obstacle size may increase the heat transfer. There may be a possibility it can also decrease, but in this study it is increasing. Change in position also contribute to heat transfer rate variations. In the next study, an application of control volume based finite element method for nanofluid heat transfer intensification in a porous sinusoidal cavity considering thermal non-equilibrium model is being studied. So these are the governing equations. There may be slight changes in the notations because they are different studies. In this, for the nanofluid separate equation and for the nanoparticles separate equation is being considered. This is the outside cavity. This is the inside obstacle. The porous medium is considered. Inside it is a hot, outside boundary it is cool. When we see in this, the porous medium is being considered based on the Darcy versus Q approximation. And for the nanofluids, the KKL model is being assumed. Various studies will go with various nanofluid models for the effective, conduct, effective thermal conductivity and for the viscosity, there are various models. Depends on the model, the properties and the nature slightly will vary, may not be at a very uh, notably. From the results, we understand that here the parameter epsilon stands for the porosity of the porous medium that is fixed at 0 0.3. Then the NHS is the solid matrix or nanofluid interface heat transfer parameter. When this parameter is increased its value from 10 to 1000, in the fluid flow through streamlines, we can see there is a decrease in the hot region. The size of this is being reduced, means the fluid flow is getting reduced at this location. In terms of uh, the heat transfer of the fluid, if you see, when we having the lower value, red color for the highest heat transfer, blue color for the lowest heat transfer, the heat transfer variation, you can see it is spread up to this region. But in this, the spread is getting reduced, shrink. So increasing this heat trans interface heat transfer parameter reduce the fluid heat transfer. But in solids, initially it is less. When we increase, it is high. In the next study, the heat transfer and entropy generation analysis of nanofluid thermocapillary convection around a bubble in a cavity is studied. These are the governing equations. This is the geometry of investigation. The heat generation and the heat loss, effective utilization of heat are the very important things for any system. The entropy generation analysis is very useful to estimate the energy that is getting waste through the process of running a system. So if we reduce the waste energy, then we can use that energy for better outcomes. Say, for example, when we, when we uh, drive a car, the fuel energy is being converted into the mechanical energy. In the conversion, we cannot 
100% achieve, like 100% uh, fuel energy will get converted to the mechanical energy. During the conversion, there will be a lot of loss. Then how we can reduce that loss that can be analyzed through the entropy generation. And these are the boundary conditions. The numerical investigation of nanofluids, thermocapillary convection around a gas bubble in a cavity and the effects of nanoparticles volume fraction are being studied in this. The bottom wall is the hot wall, top wall is the cold wall. And the gas bubble is here. Now we will see when we include the suspension of nanoparticles and only with base fluids, how the heat is being removed from the hot wall to make the system to have better cooling through various values of this nanoparticles volume fraction parameter. This nanoparticles volume fraction is denoted with the parameter alpha p here. When the pure base fluid is considered, the heart of the hot wall is being measured up to 0 0.04. When one percentage nanoparticle is being suspended, then we can see here, other place also we can see, but here we can see more better. It is slightly reduced, maybe up to 0 0.035. When we incorporate two percentage of nanoparticles, it is further reduced. It has come down around three. When three percentage is included, further it is decreasing, 4 percentage and 5 percentage. If you compare the nanofluid with the base fluid without nanoparticles, the heat transfer is around 4. Means the heat, the impact of the hot ball is up to the spatial value 0 0.04. When we suspend 5 percentage of nanoparticles, then it is below 3. So, the suspension of nanoparticles effectively work as a coolant that effectively remove the heart from the heart surface and it make more space of the cavity to be cool. So this enhancement may not be possible like for again 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever we increase it may increase. Up to certain range, most of the cases up to 5 percentage suspension of solid particles into the base fluids, enhance the thermophysical properties. Later, it will decrease. We also see those results over here. In the next study, the mixed convection heat transfer by nanofluids in a cavity with two oscillating flexible pins, a fluid structure interaction approach is being studied theoretically. Left wall is considered as a hot wall right wall is considered as a cold wall. The top and bottom wall are considered as insulated walls. There is no compulsion that we can control the heat transfer rate only by some external forces or internal forces or fluid or some solid forces. There may also be a possibility like the fins, slits, and many other things like obstacles, that may also play a vital role on controlling the heat transfer rate futures. In this way, a oscillatory fin with some oscillation is being fixed here. Now, if we change these pins place or shape or the oscillation, that will also affect the heat transfer rate. The oscillation of this spin is modeled through this equation. A is the impacts of the ratio of thermal conductivity of flexible fins to the nanofluid. When this value of K being increased from 1 to 1000, we can see there is a notable variation in the Nusselt number. In other form, the same gra graph is given over here. So increase in the oscillations in the fins used to increase the heat transfer. 
Now, the variable magnetic field forces impact on magnetizable hybrid nanofluid heat transfer through a circular cavity is being studied here. These are the governing equations. The outer geometry cavity wall is considered as cold wall. The obstacles outer wall that are considered as hot walls. There is an electric thin wire through which the magnetic source with different magnitudes are being constituted. The impact of the magnetic source parameter on the nanofluid flow within this geometry is being analyzed with multi-wall carbon nanotube and ferric oxide hybrid nanoparticles suspension in water. So this study explores the following results. This gamma R is the parameter of the magnetic strength ratio and HA is the Hartman number. When Hartman number is zero, that means the impact of the magnetic field is absent. When there is no magnetic field, increase in the strength of the magnetic parameter, magnetic parameter strength ratio, that is not going to make any impact. And this is the isotherms of this particular study. When we increase the magnetic field impact through the Hartman number from 0 to 25, let us say a moderate magnetic field is imposed. Compared to this, we can see more red color means more heat transfer. Compared to this, in this region, there is a less heat transfer, but in this region, there is more heat transfer. And compared to this, in here, further more heat transfer. That means when the magnetic field is present, when we increase the strength of the magnetic ratio parameter, that used to increase the heat transfer within the system. Similarly, if we go further higher, then compared to this, we can see here more heat is transferred. And compared to this and this, in here more impact of magnetic ratio parameter is there. And compared to the lower value of the magnetic ratio parameter with the absence of magnetic field, the impact of high magnetic field with the high magnetic strength ratio shows notable high heat transfer within the system. This is because when the magnetic field is applied, that will form the lines like waves that is producing a force called Lorentz force. The impact of the Lorentz force will be very high when the magnetic field is applied in the transverse direction to the fluid. Then the fluid flow will get reduced through the damping force called Lorentz force. That damping in the fluid flow will release the subkinetic energy. That will enhance the heat transfer within the system. Therefore, whenever the magnetic field is applied, most of the cases, the heat will be, heat transfer will be increased within the system. This is the first phase. Now we will see the second phase. In the second phase, we are going to see the experimental setup. The first study is about the natural convection heat transfer of nanofluid in the cavity under an inhomogeneous electric field. So there are various physical components. You can see here, there are 15 physical components. Say, for example, the high voltage power supply, heating power supply, the inlet of the working fluid, mica insulating layer, linear electrode, copper plate, liquid cooled plate, like that there are various components. This is the original picture and this is the schematic diagram of the exponent setup. So in this study, the natural convective heat transfer of nanofluid 
considered of transformer oil and Al2O3, that nanoparticles is suspended into the nanofluid that is being studied within a cavity under the impact of high electric field intensity. So the main objective here is to identify the coupling nature of the nanofluid and the magnetic. If we see this study and the previous study, there is no big difference. By nature, they are same. By quantitatively, they are same. Only in here, throw, for example, the electric field that is being measured in physically. But there it is being measured through a pertinent parameter. But the nature is same. And in here, when we see the impact of nanofluid concentration with the 0.1 percentage to 1.5 percentage in the heat conduction mode with the different heat transfers, heat transfer levels, we can see there is a clear enhancement. In the natural convection mode, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5, there is a very high impact. Thereafter, there is less impact. So the convection mode, either the conduction mode or the convection mode, that will also make change on the heat transfer variations. So from this, we can identify that increase in the volume fraction of nanosized particles suspension is used to increase the heat transfer within the system. And in the previous case, theoretically, when we study, the same results we got. And another important identification from this is the impact of electric field force is dominant because in here, we are considering the nanofluids compared to the ordinary base fluids the fluids with uh, some high electrical conductivity property based nanoparticles that may have better electrical conductivity. So the impact of the magnetic field will be further escalated. In the next study, the experimental investigation into heat transfer performance of water-based magnetic hybrid nanofluids in a rectangular cavity exposed to magnetic excitation. And this is the situation. In this, the novel ferric oxide and the multi-wall carbon nanotubes based nanoparticles with 80 is to 20 ratio being suspended into deionized water. If you see this study and this study, in this study, Theoretically, we have studied the water, ferric oxide, and the multi-wall carbon nanotubes based hybrid nanofluid. And magnetic field we have generated through wire, that is through this equation. So magnetic field is being represented through this. The character or futures of the magnetic field is exposed through the pertinent parameter HA with the different values. In here, the same is being exposed through direct magnetic measurement that through heads. So the methodology changes in here, for example, 80 is to 20 ratio we want. In theoretically also we can consider here instead of just H2O there, here deionized water is considered. We can take the density, viscosity, thermal conductivity, volumetric heat transfer rate, all those things when we consider for a deionized water, it is possible to model this. Then the nanoparticle suspension is varied from 0 0.05 to 0 0.4 percentage. We can also do that theoretically. Then magnetic field is varied from 4.89 to 21.95. There, in terms of Hartman number, the pertinent parameter, it can be analyzed. In here, if it is like a, in the previous study, we have seen that there is a heat conduction mode or natural convection mode. Then the convective heat transfer can be accounted through this term. Whatever the way we physically see 
through the expressions, we can do that. And then what are the results we want to analyze for the theoretical situation, practical situation. For example, in here, the cold wall is maintained through water cold bath site with these walls and pressure cards and flow meter. The hot wall is maintained through water bath hot site. In the theoretical situation, we just take, okay, the left wall is a, uh, okay, hot wall. Right wall is a cold wall. The top and bottom wall are just insulated walls. Then the boundary conditions through the value we measure the nature. That through direct imposition of a physical component, we measure the nature. So either theoretical or practical, that both are going to do the same thing. Only difference is when we make the practical application, practical verification, we can get the exact data practically and practically we see the results and then we note. When we see theoretically, it will be almost same, but there may be a possibility that in like a less than 0.1 percentage, there may be a difference. But definitely, say for example, in a practical situation itself, we want to make all the changes. Then, each time we need to model it for a particular level, we need to keep run the experiment, then change it again, do it. Suppose magnetic field instead of applying in the inclined direction, suppose we want in the transverse direction, the setup is to be changed. Suppose we want a hot wall instead of right side, it is on left side, then the setup is to be changed. Suppose we want uh, something like some effect, say the instead of uh, multi-wall carbon nanotubes and ferric oxide, we want aluminum oxide or some other oxide, then that particular nano fluid itself again to be prepared and used. Instead of deionized water, suppose we want to use something like uh, kerosene, then it is to be changed. The magnetic field impact that will may cause some environmental problem. All those things practically whenever, whatever we do, that make a lot of complications and efforts time, manpower, money, everything. Same thing through theoretical situation, through equation, it can be modeled, analyzed, get the results, observe all the possible variation. Suppose there, we run the 10, 10 parameters are there. Say for example, for hot wall, cold wall, for the uh, magnetic field, for the nanoparticle, for the ratio, for the base fluid, for each and everything, for the volume fraction, there are parameters all will be referred through the pertinent parameters. Fix nine parameters, vary one parameter, or fix eight parameters, vary combination of two parameters, or fix seven parameters, vary the combination. Whatever the way we want, we can do. Not only direct, uh, uh, like through numerical simulation, even through some artificial intelligence based uh, neural network methods, or some machine learning methods, or in any other method, we can see, we can perform this density analysis. We can identify the optimum value for the pertinent parameters. Then after that, if you go for setting the physical experiment, obviously the number of trials can be tremendously reduced. So this is the main idea of performing various theoretical studies with various combinations. It is exactly possible some complications, you can add the exact physical setup to theoretical, then it will be easy to do. So in here, the various values of this ferric oxide and the magnetic, and this multi-ball carbon nanotubes based nanoparticles with the various volume fraction is being studied. It is obvious that if we increase the temperature, the viscosity will decrease. Then if we increase the nano sized particles volume fraction, it keep on increase the uh, effective viscosity to certain level. After 0.5 in general, it will not accept. In this case, maybe after 0.4 itself may not accept. That's why they have stopped. So in this, importantly, we can observe that the average Nusselt number and the average heat transfer rate that is being increased, say for example, at 35 degrees Celsius, the average Nusselt number is increased up to 11.33 percentage 
and the average heat transfer up to 11.22 percentage when we consider 0.05 percentage of nanoparticle suspension into the base field. And not only this, the impact of magnetic field, it is being enhanced from 4.89 to 21.95. In the bottom side, that is like vertically as well as horizontally, uh, the walls of the cavity have five percentage of volume particles, this hybrid magnetic nanofluid at 35 degrees Celsius. That is enhancing the average heat transfer from 0.86 to 1.6. When it is seen, the magnetic field is applied from the top, that is enhancing from 1.27 to 25. So the orientation of the magnetic field also matters. So that we can see experimentally through this result. And uh, the same thing in here we can see, suppose the inclination angle you want to change in the magnetic field. In the theoretical study, the inclination angle can be changed through this value gamma. The magnetic field inclination angle can be changed through this value gamma. And the magnetic values when we change, for, say for example, for different volume fraction, how the heat transfer rate is changed through theoretically we have studied here, there it is experimentally. The magnetic field impact theoretically we have studied here, there experimentally. So what are the results quantitatively we can definitely say that exactly matches and physically in value, most of the times we can have almost same results. In nowadays with the high computing facilities, it is possible to exactly model even the, like say for example, the rocket launching. It will not be done directly through the real way. First they will model it. They will see what is the density, what is the engine capacity, what is the metals we are used to, what is the top, what is the head, what speed it is going, what are the layers it is going to cross, all the ways we have the data. Through that, the rocket launching, all the things will be simulated numerically, then all possible improvements will be done. Then when everything is perfectly all right, then they go for the physical setup. Then it will be more success, less time, less effort, less money, and less environmental waste. So all the way, the theoretical results will be very useful to enhance the quality of many practical situations. Then the optimum concentration of nanofluids for heat tensor enhancement under cavity flow, uh, natural convection with uh, TaO2 and water is being studied here. Gradually the same setup, F wall is hot wall, F wall is cold wall, and some more physical things are being involved into this. So mainly this study uh, consists of the nanofluids with uh, about 50 nanometer sized nanoparticles. And from the results, we observed that when the temperature difference is measured from 20 to 50, with the different nanoparticles volume fractions are being suspended and uh, the heat transfer is being measured. We can see when there is a base fluid that is in between. When it is 0.05 percentage of volume fraction nanoparticle suspension, that is effectively high at everywhere. But others, something going more, something coming less. We can see in the other view, when the volume fraction is zero, that is pure fluid, the heat transfer is about uh, something say 50. For a different temperatures, this is for uh, 20, this is for 30 and so on. When 5 percentage, 0 0.05, that means 5 percentage of nanoparticles are suspended, that is high. After that, it is being reduced. If we add more nano sized particles compared to the base fluid, the impact of heat transfer is very less. So there is no compulsion if we keep on suspend the nanoparticles for more amount, it will increase the heat transfer. To a certain level, it will increase then it will decrease. So we need to identify that certain level. Within that level, optimally, we should suspend the nano sized particles. So from this study, the maximum heat tensor enhancement is 8.2 percentage for the volume fraction concentration of 0 0.05. So these are the things we have discussed through this and identified that the theoretical situations 
are very helpful to enhance the experimental setups. Number of trails can be tremendously reduced. Say, for example, the fan. The fan cannot be uh, like it is not directly modeled in a single stage. In the ancient days, we can see that the fans may be uh, like it is consuming more power. It is producing very less air delivery. But now you can see there are like some fans that is consuming very less power, but producing better air delivery. That all being modeled, say it is an RC circuit, then the uh, capacitance and the resistance with the different capacities, it can be modeled how much power power it consumes, how much air delivery it gives, how the RPM should be increased, how the wings should be flat or curvy, it should, what should be the size, whether it should be very thick or thin, why it should be only three, why the heads of the fan of which height, weight, like that everything will be taken into consideration and theoretically it can be modeled and analyzed and the optimum value can be taken, then it can go for the physical situation so that we can have the better outputs and inputs for the research and enhancement. So this is how the theoretical studies are very useful in the real life situations to enhance the common man's life through various practices in theory and experience. So with this, uh, I would like to stop my lecture and I will be very happy uh, if suppose there are any questions to be discussed. Yes, sir, definitely. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for that fascinating presentation and uh, uh, your passion for the topic on nanofluids really came through on the, on your present through your presentation. And um, uh, thank you. We are really grateful for the knowledge and the inspiration that you've shared with us. And uh, not to mention the contribution that you've uh, given to the event uh, by your presence. Um, we couldn't have asked for a more engaging or a more informative speaker. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Um, we will now uh, have the question answer session, sir. So uh, participants, uh, if you have any queries, you can uh, simply unmute yourself and ask your question, or you can post your queries in the chat box as well. Um, we will read it out for you if you post your queries in the chat box. So what are the main factors? Okay, it is disappearing. The message is disappearing. Hello. Ah, yes. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, sir, uh, in all those papers uh, you uh, shown to us, uh, which are the methods we are uh, using for uh, finding the solution? Yes. So different papers, they are using different methods. Selection of method is one of the very important criteria to have the results very nicely. Uh, mostly, like the finite difference methods, like uh, the MAC method, the uh, color box method, the uh, crank Nicholson method, and then in finite element method, uh, galactic based method, and many uh, and then control volume based finite element method, then finite volume method. Uh, even there are some mystery methods, and uh, there are various methods. Even there are some softwares. Uh, with that, the results will be calculated. Uh, so in these uh, different authors, they have used uh, different things. I have mentioned in the study. So, sir, which method do you prefer? I mean, uh, in your uh, research paper? And the, actually, we need to see what kind of governing equations. For example, the governing equations are linear and uh, it is like simple. Then even CF plus PA method can be used. If suppose uh, now with the very linear equations, it may not be possible to model many things. Uh, then you need to go uh, something like uh, either finite difference method or finite volume method or finite element method. There are some limitations and complexities. So for example, if you go with the finite difference method, we cannot go with the geometries uh, that is of a different shapes, say, for example, non-orthogonal geometries. Either we should transform them to the straight grids and then we apply finite difference method or not possible. Suppose if you have a trivisoidal uh, shape cavity, then finite difference method in the present form, it is not possible to apply. Then we should go with the Galatin method, uh, the finite element method. Then finite element method, we will take the control volumes, different uh, uh, parameters. Then we will uh, generate the mesh. Then based on that, it will be easy to do. So it depends on the problem. We should select the method. We use finite difference method for our studies. 
ओके सर अरे एंकर सपोज फॉर व्हेन वी आर वर्किंग इन नैनो फ्लोइ देर आर मेनी मॉडल्स विच आर अवेलेबल फॉर सिग्मा एन एफ रो एन एफ सो हाव यू डिसाइड डेट विच मेथड विल यू प्रिफर और विच मॉडल विल यू प्रिफर इन योर रिसर्च पेपर यस सो इट इज वेरी गुड दैट वी नीड टू गो थ्रो डिफरेंट लिटरेचर्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल Uh, there are maxwell model there are kkl model there are infinite number of models available maybe maybe finite but very huge number of models are available in the uh, research papers which will write through the literature survey they will be comparing some 10 15 even sometimes 30 different models for the effective viscosity and effective thermal conductivity mainly all other things like volume fraction and this uh, volumetric thermal expansion or specific heat or density viscosity that are in general list but mainly they will see for effective viscosity and effective thermal conductivity there are many models then they will be comparing and they will be giving a their preference that okay under this such circumstances uh, this particular model will be good under this circumstances this model have limitations like that they will be specifying so when we go with the particular model Uh, even in our papers we have studied two three models and when we change one model then we can find there is a small variations in the characteristics so which characteristics matches perfectly to the realistic situation that we can go for for example in one particular model of uh, thermal conductivity when we consider for the nano fluid increasing the magnetic field strength that is applied in the transverse direction that will increase the fluid actually that is controversial to the realistic situation then that particular results are not that is results are correct mathematically model is correct everything correct but physically that results are not acceptable then that model should not be used on that configuration then we should not use that model so in one line or one word we cannot say which model will be very good for all the situations so even after doing the computation that results will go waste if that model based results are either not matching with the uh, available literature or it is physically it is something different then we need to change the model sir can you suggest uh, one good book for uh, coupled uh, i mean where anyone can understand the coupled governing equation uh, instead of books i suggest you go with the literature review papers uh, because in the books they will be writing the very basic fundamental things so in the very basic fundamental things the coupling and many other parameters in general will not be there suppose for example you want to learn about the methods then you can go with the books but if you want to know about the recent advancements in the governing equations then you should study the literature review papers they will be taking sometimes 50 sometimes 10 or more and the recent volumes also you should uh, books will be very good to understand the simulation point of view like the uh, numerical methods and other things but for the governing equations the knowledge from the books will not be all that sufficient because they do write with the basic things so last question uh so uh, what difference will make uh, ferro nano fluid ah uh, actually this ferro nano fluid is nothing there are in each and every nano particle there will be electrical conductivity property some nano particles say for example ferric oxide nano particles then that nano fluid we say as a ferro nano fluid so it is something not that is entirely different from other nano other nano fluids also will have magnetic property but when we consider the nano fluids with uh, this ferric oxide based or something that will have extended uh, this uh, electrical conductivity property that we say ferro fluids so that ferro fluid actually in that again two ways are there uh, like uh, the maxwell fluid ferro fluid like that the non newtonian fluids if we consider uh, based on uh, the other model if you go that is one way then in one other model this uh, chai and uh, chai model in the when we go uh, with uh, like a ferric oxide nanoparticles or something like that that means ferromagnetic 
So ferromagnetic fluid is not something entirely different from other or other category. The nanoparticles with the high electrical conductivity property is being suspended into nanofluids like ferro fluid, fer, uh, ferric oxide, then that is a ferro, ferro uh, nanofluids. Thank you. So we have some questions in the chat yes. box. Yes. Uh, Dr. Sharnmuga Priyan wants to know, uh, most of the heat transfer problem derived by partial di differential equations. Any reason why? Yeah, actually, uh, I told you in the beginning of the uh, lecture that, say, for example, uh, my slide is visible. No, sir. Okay. So it is all depends on our need that uh, uh, the equations should be of uh, partial or ordinary. Say, for example, in this case. In this case, suppose we are interested to analyze the heat transfer only uh, the heat flux variation only with respect to the spatial variable, not the temporal variable, and all the other effects, including the convection, diffusion, all the effects are absent. Then only the heat flux and the temperature gradient relation can be studied in using the ordinary differential equation. If we just add the impact of time, then it will become partial. Then all, suppose we go only with one dimension, then it is one dimension. Suppose we go with more than one dimension, then it is three dimensions or maximum. Then if we want to have whether the thermal conductivity is a constant or varying with respect to temperature, how it is varying, then it will become nonlinear. So the depends on the uh, physical situation, we need to add the complexities into the governing equations. Say, for example, this is a very simple form of heat transfer equation. But if you go to a practical situation, the heat transfer equation may be like this. Further, if we up update some more in in impacts, then it will be like this. Further, if we update something like this, uh, this uh, viscous dissipation, joule heating, heat source sourcing, then the heat transfer equation will be like this. So it is all depends on our need, what way we are considering the equations. Hello. Yes. Sir, uh, some people are using a change of variables and they convert uh, PD into system of OD. Yes. So how the, uh, I mean, how it is it guaranteed that the solution of this OD uh, will convert to the solution of the original PD? Exactly. So this one, you see here, so this is a thin rod. If uh, in general, whenever in the physical situation, we consider the uh, heat transfer or fluid flow or water maybe, we should consider three dimensions and a time. So in here, three variables should be there and in here, one more variable should be there. But if the diameter of the rod is considered as yes, very thin, then in here, to here, there will be a considerable temperature difference. But in y direction, when we see here to here, we don't have that much difference. In each direction as well, we don't have that much difference. So compared to the variations in the x direction, the variations in the y direction and each directions can be neglected under the condition the diameter of the rod is uh, small. In that way, two dimensions can be reduced. Then when we reduce the dimensions, how to reduce? For that, we mathematically, we use the parameters, like uh, for example, uh, the uh, uh, throw the kachi Raymond equation, throw the stream functions. We reduce two variables, means two dimensions, to a single dimension. When we do that reduction, the assumption is, when we reduce the dimension from two to one, that impact physically, whatever we measure, it is not going to be effective that much, very, very much affecting. Say, for example, most of the studies, when they reduce two dimensional to one dimensional through the similarity transformation, that all studies are fluid flow over the geometries. When fluid flow over the geometries are concerned, like one direction, it will be of infinite in length. They are semi-infinite plates. 
So in one direction, the variations will not be there because that is infinite in length. Only in other direction, where the boundary layer thickness is there, only up to that the impact will be. There. So the variation in this direction, this is infinite in length. But in this direction, the x direction, we can find the various. Uh, means in the y direction, we can find the variation. In the x direction, it will be infinite in length. In that constraint, physically, they will reduce that dimension. That solution will be applicable. For example, in this second temperature and this second temperature, it is not be exactly same. There might be a very minute difference. That minute difference, when collectively added, up to the time, a notable temperature difference, maybe in 10 minutes or half an hour or one hour, it is observed. Then only it will be physically reliable. Others are, there is a change, but it is insignificant. So it is a, it can be neglected. And that way, physically, when we reduce the dimensions, the nature will be matched. And then now mathematically, when we see, if the impact of X and Y are through the parameter eta, it is being given, then mathematically, the whatever the value you want to change for X, that also, for that also, eta will respond. What are the value you want to change for Y, for that also, eta will respond. So that parameter, uh, that similarity parameter, similarity transformation parameter, it is the constraint that it should satisfy the boundary condition, it should satisfy the cauchy riemann equation. Mathematically, that will take care of dimension loss. Physically, this condition, that uh, fluid flow is considered in a semi-infinite vertical plate. Fluid flow is considered over the plate. Fluid flow is considered in a very thin rod. That kind of physical situation will take care of the dimension loss. So this is how the both will be managed mathematically as well as physically. Uh, hi, Professor. Thank you for the amazing talk. Right? It's a kind of a new topic for me, but uh, I, I do have a question here. Please. So um, when the nano particles flow, right? Uh, that's what we are trying to understand, and how the heat is being transmitted from one part to another part. So is there a possibility that um, you know there is a Brownian motion uh, yes. in this involved here? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Whenever uh, we go with the nano fluid, particularly modeling, by the time we'll go with this Dawson Divari model. In the Dawson Divari model we will not have the impact of Brownian motion because for Brownian motion concentration also needed. In this, the concentration is considered through this uh, volumetric thermal expansion. So separate concentration equation, it is not considered in the Das and Divari models. So the impact of Brownian motion, it is inbuilt considered through the physical parameters, the thermophysical properties. But if you go with the uh, other model, the Bongiano model, in that Bongiano model, seven slip mechanisms are considered. Out of that seven slip mechanism, this Brownian motion is also input. So that Brownian motion is, is one of the very important mechanism. If you don't consider the fluid particles uh, impact separately, then we will consider based on the model, overall one fluid model, with the assumption that all the uh, nanoparticle and the base fluid all put together, it will be like the impact of the nanoparticles uh, different nanoparticles are different base fluid that is not going to have better impact. Overall, that is a fluid. But on that seven slip mechanisms, including this bone in motion, they are very important. That way it will be taken into consideration. So two different models are there. So the Brownian motion is one of the very important in the bone genome model. But in that nano fluid properties in general will not be considered. Okay, thank you so much. Actually, I uh, asked this question behind this the, behind the question. The motivation was that you know uh, it may not be deterministic, right? So there there has to be some stochastic element in this analysis. So that is the reason why I had asked you know whether there is oh. brownian motion. Uh, in the model, what we choose uh, depends on that. This will be addressed. Brownian motion will be considered in the Bongiorno based nano fluid model based equations. Uh, in this. Uh, Das and Divari based equations, that Bongiorno model in that uh, Brownian motion will not be considered because volumetric thermal expansion concentration should be there for the uh, Brownian motion. That uh, concentration in this, there is no separate model because that will be considered through the volumetric thermal expansion in Das and Divari model. There is no separate governing equation. So this and that uh, will not uh, take both. 
Thank you so much. Uh, there, there are two more questions from Dr. Subramanian, sir. Yes. Uh, what are the main factors or parameters that influence the convective heat transfer and fluid flow characteristics within nanofluid filled cavities? How do variables such as nanoparticle concentration, cavity geometry, and temperature gradients affect the behavior of the system? Yes. Uh, say, for example, uh, in here we can see this is a geometry. For this geometry, the fluid flow is like this. But relatively same kind of setup when we go with some other geometry. Say, for example, this is the, ge this is the geometry. This is the geometry. In this, the fluid flow is this. Suppose in here bubble is there, then we can see that over here. Suppose we go with this geometry, in here fins are there, then it will affect that particular. Suppose if you go with this geometry, these obstacles are here, then that will affect it. So the geometry obviously affects the fluid flow heat transfer. Now, uh, the pertinent parameters. Say for example, uh, the nanoparticles in here, the multi-wall carbon nanotube and ferric oxide-based nanoparticle is considered. This is considered in, okay, this we can see from this example. So the nanoparticle, nanoparticle volume fraction, when it is considered at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can see the difference in the heat transfer. It is about cooling. So this nanoparticle volume fraction play an important role on analyzing the heat trends, on, ex on maintaining like whether if you want to increase or decrease or control. Then the magnetic field, if you see, for example, the magnetic field, you can see that is an example like that any other parameter, heat source in parameter, Eckert number, Rayleigh number, Reynolds number, or whatever maybe the parameter you want to study. In here, the magnetic field, when it is absent, it is of some value, it is of high value, it is affecting the heat transfer. So same way, there may be some parameters that may not affect anything. There may be parameters that mostly affect. Out of 10 parameters, few parameters may have significant impact, few parameters may not have significant impact. And the nanoparticles, base fluids, nanoparticle shapes, amount, volume fraction, and the considered something like a heat source, a heat sink, uh, viscous dissipation, dual heating, magnetic field, inclination of the angle, the rectangular geometry, square geometry, in uh, uh, cavity that uh, ca square cavity, rectangular cavity, or uh, T shaped, L shaped, any type of cavity, everything will affect the heat transfer and the field. Thank you, sir. So there is another question from the same participant. He wants to know, are there any limitations or challenges associated with studying convective flows of nanofluids in cavities? What are some of the complexities, complexities or uncertainties that researchers in this field commonly face? The number one thing is the governing equations. Suppose this is a governing equation. For this governing equation, it may not be possible. Say, for example, we use uh, the finite difference. In that finite difference method, suppose we use the Kran Nicholson based method or the MAC method or the uh, lattice Boltzmann method or any other method we use. In each and every method, there will be some difficulties with the convergence criteria and the software uh, running time. Suppose we want to have better results, then if you, if you keep the mesh size as small as possible, then we can have better results. But whenever we increase the mesh size, with our normal system, say for example, with my system, if I want to run my code, then uh, if I want to have, uh, say for example, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, finite difference method code, it will take me sometimes in five minutes. It can give if suppose uh, ten to the power uh, ten to the power six. Uh, I keep as a well. Suppose if I keep it for 10 to the power 9, that will take 2-3 days. Then we should need the help of some supercomputers. Suppose if we use this uh, uh, finite element method, uh, say for example, we want to use this uh, uh, software, something like Fluent or software, something like OpenFOAM. Then our computer capacity should be very high. Now, uh, when we change the value, 
the results, what we see, that should match with the exact, exact uh, theoretical, that uh, what are the literature results. If that not matching, then that particular method or the particular model will not be useful. And uh, to say, for example, uh, for heat transfer, sometimes we go with the Fourier model. Compare with, instead of that, if you go with the non-Fourier heat flux model, then the governing equation will be more high, more big. Then it will be more, it will be more time taking. And suppose if you go with the cavity, if it is a square cavity or rectangular cavity, it is very easy to do by any finite difference. If you go with something like a fin, that fin oscillation also we need, or we want to have some slits, or we want to have some obstacles, or we want to change the shape, then the finite difference method will be very complicated to use. Then if you go with finite element method or finite difference method, if you go with the finite element method, forming the mesh through towards this kind of circles will be very complicated. Then the coding process will be difficult. If you go with some kind of inbuilt softwares, it will be very easy, but that will not have the futures to make the governing equations by our own. That will have all fixed possibilities. So if we go with the governing equations based on the geometry, how we are modeling the governing equations, the complexities are like if you go with the different non-orthogonal shape cavities, then finite difference based methods will not work directly. Either we should transform the non-orthogonal mesh to orthogonal mesh, then apply finite difference methods. Again, on that, if we use this, uh, the uh, finite difference methods, the stability is one kind of one, one of the problem. Solvers, suppose MAC method, different solvers are there. Different solvers will have different criteria. Pretendent parameters value also affect the uh, stability. Then the results may not be stable. Then the order of error will be very difficult. So missing error will be very high. Suppose they use implicit methods, then computational time will be very high. If you go with the finite element method, the mess generating mess through this will be high, will be difficult. So governing equations, if you go with some complicated system like this, then coding all the equations will be difficult. So all of depends on the more accurate we go for modeling, more complexities will be there. For example, this physical setup as it is we want to model, it is easy. This side cold wall, this side hot wall, top wall, insulated walls, it is easy. But if you want to model this situation, Suppose here one different wall, here one different wall, here different temperature, here different temperature, here different temperature, here different here, then it is complicated. So it all depends on what kind of problem we choose and what kind of level we increase the complexity. There are many things to work out. You're simply amazed by your knowledge and expertise, sir, in this uh, field. So there's just one more question. Shall I read it out? Yes, one, one from Professor Vandana Bisht. Uh, she wants to know, uh, to solve system of PDEs, how we choose similarity transformation? Yeah. Uh, similarity transformations, through similarity transformations, we can reduce. But we need to keep two, three important things. If the fluid flow inside the cavity, then reducing through similarity transformation is wrong because these cavity, if it is of having like three dimensions, in one dimension, fluid will be flowing in infinite length. So third dimension can be neglected. But the variation in X and variation in Y cannot be uh, removed. So we need to go with the uh, two dimensions. Suppose we study the fluid flow in over a plate. When fluid flow over a plate, in one dimension, it is infinite in length. Say, for example, X direction. Then the variations will be there only with respect to Y direction. The other is a direction, again, it is a horizontal change. That is with the plate. That is, again, can be neglected. If it is a semi-infinite plate, the down, we don't need to consider. So only one dimension is sufficient to understand the physical situation. In that case, we can go only with the, we can go with the similarity transformation. We can reduce it. Otherwise, if we reduce, it is not possible. Suppose fluid flow over the cylinder, it is okay. But fluid flow inside the cylinder, we should not reduce. 
So it is all about the physical situation and the consequences. Okay, sir. So there's one more question. Professor Vijay Sardi wants you to suggest some basic books for solution methods like shooting method. Uh, for a shooting method, I think uh, this Sebi uh, that is one of the good book to understand about this basics of the finite difference method, including that uh, shooting method. Uh, maybe that uh, by that link uh, for the book that exactly I will type and send you. You can get it from the cases. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Uh, we've uh, you've spent almost half an hour just answering questions. Thank you for your patience uh, for answering the questions at in leisure uh, and in detail. Uh, so it's a big thanks from all of us here, sir, uh, to you. And um, uh, we really hope that uh, we will have an opportunity to connect with you again on another platform. Uh, so thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Thank you, sir for uh, giving thank me you, thank opportunity you, sir. to share some of my views. Uh, I thank all the local uh, team uh, and the uh, you know, higher management uh, for uh, giving this opportunity. And I really uh, feel that uh, there are some uh, participants, they are really interested and they are attending. Uh, and even by late night for us, uh, they are like paying attention. So I thank all the participants for their time uh, and even efforts because uh, like at this time, uh, everyone maybe at home, uh, still they are like concentrating their lectures. And this is a good opportunity to create platforms with a lot of efforts, organizing secretaries, all the organizing team. Uh, you would have spent a lot of time and you would have put a lot of efforts to bring this kind of events. That is really good to enhance uh, some kind of uh, knowledge sharing through various platforms. So thank you all and uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 So participants, uh, we hope that you all filled up the feedback forms. Uh, thank you again. Uh, thank each of you for uh, your patience in uh, staying till the end. So a uh, quick uh, information about tomorrow's session. It is not 6 to 7, it is 7 to 8. Tomorrow's session begins at 7. So we hope uh, to meet you again tomorrow. Um, thank you, everyone. Shall we end the meeting, ma'am? Or Let's end the meeting, ma'am. Um, feedback link is not posted in the chat box. Already shared, ma'am. One second, I have shared now. Uh, okay. We'll wait for uh, one minute then and then close. Shall we end the meeting? I am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, madam. Ma'am. Hello. 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 Hello.